page except the tag. Oh, okay. Well, then. Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And today we are going to be talking to Miss Elisa Richardson about how to love yourself daily. Um, she is doing a challenge right now that myself, along with the board members of the Butterfly Visions Project and our self-care partners are going to be participating in or promoting for the month of August because self-love is very, very, very important. As you know, for this year, our motto or our theme for the year is take care of yourself, self-care matters. And so part of self-care, of course, starts with loving yourself and it starts within. So Miss Alicia Richardson has come up with a challenge that I had the pleasure of taking last month or doing last month. And I found it to be very rewarding, but also it gave me a time to reflect on myself and to get back connected with me for me to find myself because a lot of times when we're busy being mothers working full-time going to school full-time running businesses so forth and so on with life being so busy especially now in a pandemic sometimes we lose ourselves and sometimes that means losing part of your self-love so alicia has come up with this challenge to help not only herself not only us but you as well, to learn how to love yourself on a daily basis. And so I am very, very proud to have Miss Alicia back with us. As you know, she was a um, co-host with us last year or, and also into this year, but also she's on the board with Butterfly Visions Project, which I'm happy to have her back as one of our board members. So Miss Alicia Richardson, let's go ahead and get started. Please tell us about your movement and why it was important for you yourself to reconnect with yourself and learn how to love yourself again. First of all, hello everyone. I hope everyone is being safe and doing well. So the re what made me come up with the self-love challenge is the fact that with so much going on, we in quarantine and then the um, riots and stuff. And I was like, where is the love? Did, did people <laughs> lose track of loving themselves and who they are? So it actually took me almost a month to come up with the whole content, to come up with the, the idea, the vision, because it was a process. When I had to do the videos, I had to write, come up with the action journals. So it was just me looking at everything going on and I was like, something got to change. Something somewhere is a disconnection with people. And then I was like, not just with people showing on towards everyone else, it's where's the connection within yourself? Because if you, you feel in a certain type of way, you would not allow certain things or you wouldn't do certain things. So I was like, yeah, it's, it's a disconnection somewhere. So that's how I came up with it. Have you ever felt yourself that you've struggled with self-love? Oh my gosh, yes. It, in the past, I didn't even love myself. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't know who I was because I was so busy being a people pleaser. I was going through um, abusive relationships. So I was totally lost. I didn't know nothing. Like to the point where, and I, Tiffany, I know you heard me say this before, I did not like looking in the mirror. Because if I look in the mirror, I got to look at myself. And if I look at myself, it's like, who are you? So I've suffered from that for years. And I'm so glad that I was, it took for me, unfortunately, to have to deal with a whole nother situation for me to say, hold up, I, it's a disconnection within myself. And I want to know and learn who I am. And it took for me to move to North Carolina to know that. At first, I just felt like, oh, moving here just to get away. I, I feel like, I mean, I felt like I was trapped in a box when I was in Maryland. I felt like I couldn't grow any higher. So when I came down here, it was like, you got to share your story. You got to do this. And I'm like, I don't have no story. I don't know what to talk about. And by doing, by me hearing that, the words over and over, I'm like, if I'm afraid to share a story, then it's something within me I need to deal with. Right, right. Well, I'm not gonna let you get away with it. Tell us your story. <laughs> I know. 
because it needs to be heard. And I think that knowing what your story is will also help others um, know that all of us have story. All of us have a past. And a lot of times when we've been through things in our lives, we lose ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's really important for you to share your story. Let's hear it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. So I, and that's how actually me and you met. Yes. <laughs> you were, you were coming up with the speaking up, speaking inspire. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, there go right there. I need to do it. And prior to that is when I was already doing personal development within me. So by me going through the personal development within me, I was feeling more open and willing to share my story for the world so everybody can know. Domestic violence is real. It's not something you sweep under the rug. Just what happens in our household stays in our household. No, because when you, that's how I was growing up. Like what happens here stays here. It's no one else's business. But then when you stay in that box of thinking it's no one else's business, how can you get support? How can you get help? And then you feel like you're going to be judged if you do reach out. Very true. And one of the um, consequences or one of the effects of domestic violence is um, the manipulation, um, putting the, the victim down, um, isolating them from their friends and family. And you know it ha has a lot of emotional and verbal abuse um, that, that happens in domestic violence. So a lot of people, when they think of domestic violence, they only think of black eyes and a busted lip. They don't think about the words and they don't think about the actions and the intimidation right. that happens in domestic violence. But I know me, there was times when I said I would rather be hit than to be called the names that I was called before and put through the things that I was put through just through the words that were said to me. Um, I think those have more of a lasting effect. You know, uh, mm, they I have was, more of a lasting effect. Yeah. A that hit, a bruise goes away, but those words, they resonate in your head. And unfortunately, when those words resonate and you hear it over and over and over again, then part of you starts to, to believe it because that's your life in that moment. And no matter who we were before domestic violence, domestic violence makes you into a different person. Yes. And thankfully you came out of it alive and you came out of it with a mission and a purpose. Yes. So um, I'm really thankful uh, that I was able to meet you as a survivor um, and not as a victim, even though I think yeah. meeting you as a victim that would have been a whole nother experience with you. But meeting you as a survivor has showed me your strength and how many things that you have conquered as a woman and as a mother. Um, and so it was very fitting when I saw you doing this challenge because ever since I met you, that is what you've preached every single time we've done something <laughs> together, you've always mm -hmm. talked about self-love. So tell us, what does self-love mean to you personally, Alicia? To me personally, it means not giving up on yourself, willing to basically learn who you are, whether your weakness and your strength, because I know it was a time where I knew all my strengths, but I didn't know what my weakness was. And it's like, if you don't know what your weakness is, then you will accept, still accept certain things. So by you learning what your weakness is, it's, it's really learning who you are. So basically diving deep within me is self-love, self-care, because now I'm figuring out what my boundaries is, what I'm willing to accept, what I'm not going to accept, what I like, what I dislike, what's my strengths, what's my weakness. And when I'm saying strengths and weakness, I'm also talking about like in me building a business and who I am as growing, it's all of that because it comes together. Like you have to know both. And some people just focus on the strengths. And then when it comes to the weakness, like, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm, what I'm weak at. And it's like, you have to learn that in order to really know what you want and what's going on inside of you. And once you figure all of that, you will be able to listen to your body when you having certain pains and certain things going on. It's like, okay, yeah, I didn't drink enough water. Then that's why my back hurt. Or, you know, just for an example, not saying that's the reason why, but just for an example, because it's like, if you, what you put in reflects on out. And I say that so much as well. And so, yeah, that's what self-love, self-care and all wrapped in one means to me. And also basically 
your all overall health and well-being and being able to move your body and just what you put in your body. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, what are, what did you find were some of your weaknesses that you needed to work on to find yourself again? Oh my goodness. <laughs> some of my weakness was, <laughs> I'm going to start with the business part and then okay. work my way. With my business, I found out my weakness is I don't know how to market myself. I didn't. And I was just trying and trying and trying. I'm like, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm not being successful with this. I cannot do this. This has to be someone else's job. I have to <laughs> look for someone that's an expert in this. So I'm giving up on this. I'm releasing control of trying to do it. Here you go. Can you take over? Do what you got to do with that. My weakness was in the past was me personally is not knowing how to say no to people and always trying to please everyone because I thought me pleasing people was me helping people. And I've learned that me constantly pleasing people and not saying no to people was enabling them as well. As long as, as much as it was enabling me because sometimes I was not saying no and I did not want to do it. Right. It's like, uh, I, don't, I don't want her bad feelings if I say no. <laughs> So now it's like, when somebody asks something, if I don't feel like it, uh, no. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, man, you always saying no. Yeah, because I don't want to do it. Yeah. It's not serving me. No, no, sorry. Right, right. Yes, I know. Um, beginning of last year, that was my 2019 um, resolution to myself is say no, because that's part of my self-care. Yes. And say no, because not everybody is, is, is really working for my benefit. A lot of people want you to be involved with things or they want you to do this and they want you to do that because they want your name or they want your experience or they just want the platform or maybe they're doing it because they have an ulterior motive that's not in your best interest. Mm -hmm. Or they could just be asking because they really need it, but not always someone needing us is in our best interest or in our, in our benefit or sometimes it's just really not something that we need to do because again, we're enabling them not to be self-sufficient and not to do things for themselves. Um, so I, I definitely had to learn through one of our sisters, Miss uh, Irish Benton, and she said on Sundays, Sundays is my day. And she said, I don't care what's going on. Otherwise in church, I'm not doing it. And I said to her, I, I can't reserve one day to do absolutely nothing but me. I've tried and I, till this day, and I was probably a year ago, I still have not been able to designate a day for myself, but that's just me and it's okay because I have my days for my family, which is for me, that's with, for me. But we have to find out what those things are for each other, you know, for ourselves. So, so let me ask you a question. Yes, ma'am. It's taking 30 minutes for yourself. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can do 30 minutes for myself, but a whole day every week? No, I so can't. Do this. Try 30 minutes at least five days out the week for you. And I remember saying this, even if it's sitting in your car, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. you doing something that, that's just, re, just calming your mind just for you. So yes. you... Now, Sunday, and I felt, I feel you because I used to be always on going like, oh, I got to yeah. meet, I do this, I got to do that. <laughs> Even on Sundays, I was doing it. And some, it, it got to the point where I was doing webinars and meetings. And this was before the quarantine, uh -huh. up until 11 o'clock, 1130 at night, 12 o'clock at night. And uh -huh. I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. I was like course I was just hearing it like come on now when it, when are you going to have some family time when are you going to have some me time I was like I'll get to it I'll get to it yeah but then over time I was like when am I going to get to it stop putting my top I'm the top priority because yeah. if I'm not functioning right how can I even help anyone else or even grow a business I cannot mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Sundays I'm not even, well, I'm lying. Sometimes I would. I was about to say, don't lie now. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> now, also what I would do on a Sunday, like with the self-love challenge, I will send that email out because, mm -hmm. but guess when I'm sending it out? 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I was getting them faithfully by the time I woke up in the morning. Yep. <laughs> 
But let yeah. me send these emails out and the rest is all about me. So Sundays, yeah. and I thank Miss Iris Benton for that because I was not even taking Sunday, but Sundays, yes, I'm not doing anything only but what Alicia want to do. Even right. if it's just Netflix and, and binging the whole day. That's just what I chose to do for Sunday. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I take my day. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I haven't got to the point of taking a day for myself, but I will take those moments, those 30 minutes that you're talking about to just kind of reflect. There's times I'll just go, like when I'm at work and I start feeling overwhelmed, I'll just say, they know when I go like this, they know that I'm going to my car, I'm having a moment of Tiffany reflection, um, and that's my time for myself. But then, you know, also when I'm off, because I'm off on the weekends, there's things that I want to do, but I... Last year, and you know, very few people know this, but I had a, a breakdown, like a whole mental breakdown, because it, I was just overwhelmed with so many things, with life, with with school, with with family, with everything. I just for a month or two was just done. I couldn't do much of anything. I couldn't concentrate, um, and that just really told me to listen to my body and yes. know when enough is enough. And so now when I feel myself getting tired, my kids know when I go in the room and close the door, that's mommy time. Don't knock on the door. Don't call my name. My daughter, she's famous for texting me like I'm like I'm still on her clock. No, I'm not. I'm not answering your text message. <laughs> so, um, you know, I've, I've taught people around me that when I need my time, please respect my time. Um, and I think that's really important too, as a mother, to let your kids know that it's okay for mommy to take time for herself, just like it's okay for you to take that time for self-care and self-love. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna say this because I'm so glad you brought that up when you said you had a mental breakdown, because now so many people are having mental breakdowns. And yeah. when you think about it, it's because you was doing so much and now it's like, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know. I don't know who. And some people don't even know who they are because they wasn't used to being still with themselves. So it's like so much going on. You were so overwhelmed. You was just doing so much. And now that you had time to sit with yourself, you don't know who you are. So that's why I'm saying them 30 minutes are needed. And when you think about it, it's 24 hours in a day. Even when you, sometimes even when you're going to sleep, your mind's still racing about, oh, I got to make sure I do this tomorrow. I got to make sure I do that. I got to make sure I do this, check this, check that. And it's like, well, are you, you still not even letting you be at ease. So it's like you taking this 30 minutes to just reflect and calm down. Listen to some Zen music if you need the help, if you need that type of help to do it. And it will really help you. So it's like throughout, when I feel my days and I'm like, oh, I'm having a really, really super busy day. I be like, I got to take my, I got, pause. <laughs> yeah. I need to meditate for 15 minutes because I, uh, it's too much going on. And I do that. I don't care what time of the day is. It could be five, six o'clock and I'm in the middle of something. I'm like, uh, my brain is going too much. Mm -hmm. I got to sit and focus and just, I meditate. So some days I meditate three times a day. I normally meditate twice right. and I meditate every morning at between seven, seven thirty. Mm -hmm. And every night when I'm laying down to go to bed, I meditate. And when I tell you it relaxes my mind to the point where I don't have all that clutter and chatting stuff going on and remind me what I got to do the next day. It helps me be to sleep. Yeah. So yeah, that's, and them, them 30 minutes is, and if you, some people like, I don't, I don't still know how I'm gonna get 30 minutes, take 15. <laughs> yeah have yes. to take some minutes for you it helps you recharge if, yes. if somebody need me to say it that way it really helps you recharge your whole mind body and spirit it helps you to recharge a little bit and it's yeah. so needed that's part of self-care that's part of self-love that's part of loving who you are and respecting you because part of self-love is respecting you you that's want true. someone to respect you you got to show respect for yourself first I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, a couple of months ago, I believe it was in May, uh, Andrea Merriman, she she saw me venting and she me messaged me and she was like, I want to talk to you about something. <laughs> so we were, we were talking and she basically charged me for seven days to write down my thoughts and my feelings and, you know, kind of what's going on with me. 
And that was really hard to do because I don't, I don't really stop to say, oh, Tiffany, why are you feeling that way? Or, you know, I, I get the thought and then if I'm busy, I just push it aside and I don't even come back to it later. Or I just don't make the time to self-reflect. So um, when I did that exercise, it was very emotional for me because I realized that there was a lot of things that was very, that was unresolved that I was still dealing with. Um, and your challenge did the same thing. It helped me to kind of reflect, to think about um, some things that were still on my mind or on my heart. Um, it also helped me to kind of look myself in the mirror, as you said earlier, um, because I was getting to a point where I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like what I saw in the mirror. And it wasn't just, you know, me saying, you know, oh man, I've gained all this weight and so forth and so on. But it was just like, who are you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think all of us go through that at some point in our lives. I don't know anybody that can say they've never had one of those moments where they looked in themselves in the mirror and questioned who they, who they were. Um, mm -hmm. So what I would like for you to tell us without giving away, but tell us what can a person expect with your self-love challenge? When you talk to someone and say, hey, take this challenge with me, what are you asking them to do? Look deep within themselves which you said you had to do basically because I had to look deep in with myself and it helped me to face some things that I didn't think I was, like you said, I, things I think, thought was not bothering me, things that I thought was I was over or, you know, it helped me because an issue that I used to have in the past was asking for help. And that's why it was important to add that to the challenge. That's one of the, cha I, can't, I don't remember exactly what day it is, but it's one of the days where I'm asking you, have you asked for help? Because in the past, I was like, I, I, let me just figure it out. Let me just figure it out. And I would not ask anyone for no type of help with anything. I don't care what it was. I was just like, let me figure this out and go along with it and it, it made it take made, made it take longer for me to figure it out because I was not asking for the proper help from the proper people that knew how to do it. I'm trying to give you the giving you the platform because I want to make sure that people can connect with you, which I think is really important. Um, when you're asking someone to take a challenge, then people have to be able to trust that you have some kind of expertise on this and you have some kind of experience. So when you were developing this self-love challenge, did you do the, the exercises yourself before you put it out there? Or was it as you were doing it, you were going through the exercises yourself? As I was doing it, that's when every, the, day, the days I'm doing it, it's like I'm working on it. That's why I took basically a month for me to do it because it's like I'm not going to ask you to do something and I don't know nothing about it that's like saying hey can you do this and it's like sure <laughs> what was your experience with and it's like um I didn't do it <laughs> that's, that's, not, see, that's not genuine and it's like it's not. You just throw something out there um mm -hmm. it's even one of the chat one of the days when I'm talking about eating habits I used mm -hmm. to it I used to basically binge eat and then I used to like I had a real issue when it came to eating and I would just not eat all day and then when I eat I'm just eating everything all at one time and it was not healthy eating it was me eating all kinds of cookies cakes and whatever I can grab and I just felt like okay well this is making up for me not eating throughout the day so I'm good no that was not being good and I actually had, at that time, I was going through that as well. I had a teacher, because I was in college, that told me, won't you write down a food journal so you can have, so you can track everything you're eating? And I'm like, I don't know how to do that, but I did it anyway. So when I switched over, basically I'm a pescetarian and I've been one since September, when I switched, I still had to make sure I was eating the right foods because you can switch to vegan, a vegetarian, and you're still not eating properly. So I still had to make sure, hey, Evan, make sure mm -hmm. I was eating the right way and write down what I ate for the day, what I mm -hmm. ate for the week. So I was like, okay, 
all right, I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track. I'm on the right path because, and what made me switch how I was eating, because I used to feel so bloated. Like, what is going on? It's like, why? I don't, I, and I was already only eating like chicken, turkey, and that was it. I mean, well, chicken and turkey, and then, of course, whatever else. But I, because I had cut out prior to me turning to pescatarian, I had cut out eating like cookies and chips. And oh my God, that was the hardest. Cookies was so hard. <laughs> that was so hard. <laughs> you sound like me with ice cream. My husband told me the other day, because I keep complaining about my weight. He was like, well, on Fridays, when you take the twins for ice cream, we're gonna need to change it. And I was like, uh, no, that's where we're gonna, that's where I draw the line. Friday is ice cream day. And it's not just for the twins, it's for me too. So no, we're not doing that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tell you, cookies is was my go-to. And mm -hmm. when I say the cookies and chips, because it's like I had to have my sweet and salty. So it was like, yes, the combination of both, yes. But then I had to right. learn that, baby, you got to get that up. It's not helping <laughs> you. <laughs> nope, I'm not doing it. Friday right. No. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It, it was hard. It's yeah. So when it's like I, I the hardest time is was like holidays I always yeah. would bake cookies and all stuff like that for the kids for everyone and I actually really disciplined myself and I baked it actually I'm lying I asked my daughter to do it I asked my daughter to do it I said hey you want to take over the cookies uh -huh. because Know me. I used to eat the cookie dough and all. Like, mm, yes, mm. this will be good. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to give it up. So it's yeah. like, if I don't make it, I'm not going to be tempted. Right. And even when I first started, like, I'm giving that up, giving up cookies. Prior to me doing it, this is just so funny. I had got some Girl Scout cookies. Uh-oh. Like, all right. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to just fast from eating cookies for like 30, actually a 40 day fast. And when I'm done, I'm uh -huh. eating my cookies. So I right. put them in the freezer so they could be waiting for me when the time was up. <laughs> so my, uh, my oldest daughter was like, Ma, the point of fasting from something is so you don't go back to it. And I was like, um, but I got these cookies and they right. in the freezer and I'm ready to take them out to taste this it. This is last box. Right. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh. Well, can I just have a little piece to just remind mm -hmm. me? And I snuck a piece and I was like, ew, this don't even taste right. <laughs> I, I haven't eaten it so long, so I wound up giving it away. And right. so it's like you have to really mentally be disciplined. So yes, everything that I talked about in the challenge, and I've done it. I did not speak of nothing or have no actions for you, anyone to do without me having experience, me experiencing it myself. Matter of fact, I don't even think I would have been able to come up with the content if I never done it. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to come up with the content. It would have been just me trying to make up something and no. Right. Even right. when it comes to my coaching courses, it's like everything that I'm teaching you I experienced, I went through it, I walked through it. So it's like, I'm being genuine and I'm like, let me hold your hand so you can go through it. With, I can help you go through it because I've been through it. Right, right. Yeah, um, I, th I think it's really important when I see um, coaches and speakers and so forth that um, they actually walk the mile themselves um, because yeah. I'm very big for when I see like, marriage coaches and so forth and so on. I'm like, are you even married? <laughs> you know, how are you giving advice? Are you even married? So um, I think it's really important, you know, when we're in the community or we're talking about things that we actually have walked in those yeah. shoes ourselves because how can we coach someone else? Or how can we help someone else? How can we teach others to practice self-love when we don't even love ourselves? Right. So, Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, how long is the challenge and why, why that length of time? The challenge is 14 days plus an extra bonus day. So it's really 15 days. And at first I was like, should it be 28 days? And I was like, um, 28 days, is a little bit too long and it's not going to hold someone's attention that long. 
the average person honestly stick to something for the average of five to eight days after that they tend to fall off Okay. So with it being, if someone actually completes the whole challenge, it's like, oh my God, you actually showed <laughs> up you. So right. that's the point of it. It's like, you really pushed yourself to show up for you and be really genuine for you. Because I know I, I still have people that mainly only made it to day eight. Mm-hmm. And, it's like, um, and I reached out and was like, yeah, I want your feedback. Tell me about how, it, how. and it's like, I'm going to be honest. I only made it to day eight. Right. Like, come on now, you gotta show up for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. I like that. Days is so you can continue to show up for you. A habit is really 21 days, but with mm-hmm. 14, well, with 15 days, it's like you over the halfway mark of really being the doing a 21 day habit. So I'm like, I know people are not gonna stick to no 21 or 28 days. Mm-hmm. They're going to let life get in the way. Right. So with 14 days, well, with the 15 days, it's like, I can do this. I, mm-hmm. I can I can stick to this for just two weeks. I can do it. Right. So yeah, right. I didn't want to be overpowering um, right. by giving it like 28 or 30 days. I'm like, no, that's going to be too much. And then no one going to finish. Right. Because so I, said- I, I used to let life get in the way and be like, oh, I ain't mm-hmm. even finished that. I'll get to it. And you never <laughs> get to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you set a reasonable goal for people so that you didn't set them up for failure. Exactly. Yep. Nice. Nice. Now I'm going to be one of those people that's going to be honest. Um, no, I did not do it every day <laughs> when I got your email, but I did do it. <laughs> that I did. So um, I might've did one through three and then for a couple of days I didn't do it. And then I came back to it, but I made sure that I completed it because one, I wanted to support you. But then, like you said, I wanted to show up for myself. I wanted to make sure that this was something, I knew that it was something that I needed to do. Um, I feel that it's important for people to do. And so again, I can't ask the board to do it or I can't ask our self-care partners to do it if I didn't do it myself, just like you. So. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think 14 days is definitely a good length of time. Um, it helps somebody, you know, to actually think about it and actually work it. If it was five days, it probably would have been too short. If it was 28 days, probably would have been too long. So definitely the 14 days was definitely a perfect amount. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, are you working with anyone with the, with the self-love challenge or do you have partners that are doing this? I did it all on my you own. Or how is this, Alicia? <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> I didn't hear you. It, it did a skip. We skipped. What yeah, okay, no. I was just asking, did anyone help you with coming up with this, with the self-love challenge? Oh, no. I, I did it all on my, well, I'm lying. My um, fiance, he came up with the name of the challenge for me. Okay. Because first okay. I was like, walking with self-love what and uh-huh. I was like let me come up with a name for it. and he was like well self-love and I he was like walking with self-love or even just self-love challenge and right. I was like well it, but you're walking into self-love I really want <laughs> to walking into it but I was like no all right I'll stick to that but other than yes. that I came up with all of the content on my own even yes. the action journal and all that I when I tell you before I did everything Mm-hmm. I did a prayer. I meditated. I fast for a couple. I, I fast for five days first mm-hmm. before I came up with everything, so mm-hmm. I can have a clear mind and be able to focus. And then each day, it was like, oh, okay, all right, I could add this to it. So it was like me adding different things and different content each day. Mm-hmm. And then that's when I'm like, I was so proud of myself when I finished. I was like, I finished my challenge. <laughs> first and so it was mm-hmm. like yes I was really excited to finally finish it and I just was like yes all right I gotta reach everybody so it's like I'm gonna be rolling it out the beginning of every single month because I have a certain number of people I would love for it to reach globally mm-hmm. because everyone mm-hmm. should you know be able to understand that it starts with you hashtag me first it has to be me first I have to show up for me first so that I can show up for others. Yeah, 
Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, when you think of the self-love challenge and your own experience, what did you learn about yourself? I've learned so much. I learned how that I can be emotional, even though I already know that. I'm like really emotional. <laughs> I'm a raw baby, I already know that. <laughs> but I also learned that sometimes I have to learn to release control and just let everything some things flow because mm -hmm. I want to be so in control and make sure things is going a certain way and it's like sometimes that's not necessary Alicia just right. let it flow so right. yeah I've learned that as well to just yeah. let that life flow and I already when the, coming up with the name Mimble Moments, I already knew to just embrace the moment, embrace the things that you're going through and you're experiencing at that moment mm -hmm. and hold on to it until the next moment comes. Because mm -hmm. once you embrace that moment, that time, what you're dealing with, it's like, okay, it's taking little bite-sized pieces one by one. And it's like, oh, I, I like this. Right. So, Right. Um, I asked you last week because I put the challenge out there for the um, Butterfly Visions Project Board and I put it out there to the self-care partners who are all adults. So last week I asked you, is the self-love challenge appropriate for kids? I think it's appropriate for youth. Yes, it really is. Because when you think about it, a lot of our youth don't love our, their self because some of them are in a situation where they're not feeling the love that they think they deserve from their parents. So mm -hmm. it's, when I was younger, I didn't know how to love myself. And I think that's where it started from, for me to accept a lot of things that I shouldn't accept because I grew up in an abusive household. So by me growing up in an abusive household, it's not that much love going on in that house. Mm -hmm. It's not much, no people showing you love. It's not... I do not recall growing up when someone was like, oh, give me a hug. I love you. Yeah. So our youth really need to understand that it's okay to love yourself. It's so many angry teenagers out here. And that's because they don't understand their emotions and feelings and what's going on because of what's shown to them. So they just know how to express it through anger and hurt. And then on top of that, the suicide rate that's mm -hmm. increasing because they feel as though they don't have no one to turn to. They don't know how to love themselves. So I rec recommend it to be spread, the self-love challenge to be spread to our youth as well. Now, the I wouldn't say anyone under 12 because then they probably wouldn't understand. But yes, mm -hmm. most definitely because it's a lot of young adults that need to know how to love themselves because when you younger and you don't know and it's you becoming an adult that still don't know yeah that's true that's true i really i totally agree with that um i put the challenge out there and i'm not going to say who i challenged but <laughs> i challenged a couple of youth organizations to okay. attend the challenge to their youth so i am hoping that they are going to take on the challenge um, and that gives them the opportunity to teach, have teaching moments with the youth in yes. their organizations or under their care. Um, but even in our homes, have you yes. and your children, have your children or your fiance, have they done the self-love challenge themselves? They, they, my son is eight, so I can't expect him to do the challenge. Right. So uh -huh. yeah. And no, he has not done it yet. And guess what? I'm glad you brought it up because guess what i'm gonna challenge him to do it yeah and i'm gonna i'm <laughs> gonna challenge my household too and be like hey i think we froze yeah we froze and i have uh 12 year old twins and they're in that we're we freezing adult. we was freezing uh-oh uh-oh you see me i'm here you see me yeah okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so um, with me having 12-year-old twins, I think it's really important. This is the time, even when they were younger, we talked about, you know, loving yourself and, and respecting yourself and respecting those around you. But being in middle school, that's a challenging period for our kids. They're between being babies and being adults. 
Um, so I definitely think that this is a great challenge for kids as well um, to really get to know who they are. Um, yeah. Because sometimes we don't know who we are until we're adults, but it's it's not too early to start when you're exactly. you're an adolescent or you're a youth to get to, to start connecting with yourself. Yeah. When you think about it, you've really, as you preteen and a teenager, you've trying to figure out who you are. Yeah. So during that time, it's like so many emotions and thoughts and everything is just hate a wired. Like I don't understand life. So by you at least understanding you is a big step because right. that is so important to at least understand who you are. And that is really, really important because once they understand who they are, then the rest will, they would tend to kind of flow into and figure out, but mm -hmm. learning and knowing who they are is real important. Right. And it sets a really good foundation for them being adults as well. If yes. you know who you are, it gives you the confidence to reach for your goals, to achieve your goals. Um, but it also gives you the power to not any, let anyone take advantage of you and so forth and so on. So um, definitely a good exercise for you. Definitely 12 plus mature or maturing, should I say? Not mature, yeah. but maturing. <laughs> um, I want to do uh, a shout out to a couple of guys who um, took on the self-care challenge early that when we put it out there, beginning of 2020, um, one of them is Jonathan. Um, Jonathan Coleman, he is the founder of Blacktopia, and I know that he asked me to uh, do a, um, a testimony for you because he is promoting the self-love challenge right now, but he also told me that the self-love challenge was something that he was going to do as well, and okay. so I uh, let you know that in the month of August, what I would like to do is at the end of August or early September is come back with a couple of people that actually did the challenge so they can share their experiences with us. Because I think it's important that when people say they're going to do it, that they have they have those moments of reflection, not just with themselves, but mm -hmm. if they are someone prominent like Jonathan, or if they are someone, you know, like yourself being a public speaker or myself being a public speaker to actually talk about the benefits of self-love and why it's important. And so I'm hoping that you and I will be able to get a couple of people yeah. together to actually talk about their experience in early September, because I think it's just really important for people to hear the journey for others, especially if they're a little hesitant. You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes doing these challenges makes us scared. It does. We don't know what we're going to discover about ourselves and that can be scary for some people um that i know when i yeah it can be really, <laughs> really scary i know face, when i did the face is something you didn't want to face you. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and that in itself is scary to face something that you really need to face and so um i think it's really important for us to have a couple of people some brave people to come out and say, you know what? I did the self-love challenge and this is what I learned. Um, because there might be people that are interested in doing it, but they're scared to do it or they're yeah. hesitant to do it or they yeah. just don't know what's gonna happen when they do it. <laughs> yeah. So I would definitely love to get a group of people to come back in September to talk about the self-love challenge. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and tell Jonathan you're doing it because I know he's going to do it if I ask him to. <laughs> um, but we also had uh, Brandon Chuck Brown and also uh, Trino, Trino Ritchie, who also um, started the self-care challenge with me at the beginning of the year. So um, I'm going to put the challenge out there for them to do the self-love challenge with us. Um, they've always been very supportive of BVP. They've been supportive of you, Miss Alicia, and myself. And so not only is this self-love challenge for women like us or yous, but this is also a good challenge for men as well. Because it's for <laughs> yeah, it's for everyone. But the thing with men, why I wanted to bring up men is that a lot of times men don't want to face their feelings. They don't want to look in the mirror. They just want to provide for their families and, and just hustle every day. But yep. even men need self-love and self-care and they need that 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 mental mental well-being. And so um, this is a, a challenge for everybody. And I'm excited to go into August with 
a few of us doing the, the self-love challenge. I am too, and thank you. Um, and I want to basically touch back on when you said the men, because it's like, they, like you said, they want to be the providers, the protectors, mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't want to be in tune with my emotions. But right. that was an issue from when they was growing up to not be in tune with their feelings and their emotions. And it's like, then you really don't know who you are. Yeah. You just been programmed to mm -hmm. do what you was told you're not supposed to cry. And I'm like, oh my gosh, please don't tell no boy, yes. no kid, they don't supposed to cry because they're a boy. You right. basically let them know you don't supposed to have feelings. Right. And that's an issue that was going on in a lot of male households. You a boy, suck it up, stop crying. You don't supposed to cry. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> He's human. What's the problem? He's not going to be a sissy if that's what you think. And if he is, so what? That's what he chooses to want to be. Like, right. mm -hmm. let, let them to, I want, this challenge to be something where you know it's okay to be in tune with your feelings and who you are. That's why it's like, I want to reach, I want this to reach globally because even in other countries, it's like, you no, 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 no. You, you cannot express or want to know who you are. And it's like, you got to hide behind a veil of who you truly are and it's like you right. go on until you die and really not knowing what you really wanted what you really like you just was going off of what somebody told you you have to like what somebody told you you have to want and it's it's right. it's, it's it saddens me so it's like I want so many people to know it's okay to be in tune with yourself right it's okay love you because when you loving you, then you know what you're really standing for when you taking a stand. That, that's, that's a strong statement, a very true statement. Um, and you know, a lot of people, a lot of the core reasons why people are suffering and they're depressed and they're suicidal and they're, they're wearing these masks is because they don't know who they are or either they do know who they are, but they're ashamed to be who they are. Yeah. And it, when you have self-love, you, you're not ashamed of who you are. You're, you're, you're proud to be who you are. You're willing to stand up for yourself. You're willing to protect yourself. And when you have that self-love, then that increases your, your self-awareness, that increases your happiness, that increases, you know, your ability to, to be empowered, to advocate for yourself. But and, it, yeah, yeah, it, it, it just, it, it changes a, whole, a person's whole perspective when they're able to know who they are inside, not just on the outside. Because a lot of people on the outside look happy, but on the inside they're dying and they're 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 hurting and they're broken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's why I talk about so much. Of, it starts within, inside out, and no matter how much makeup you put on, no matter how much you dress the outside. Cause I was one of them people when I was in an abusive relationship, I would try to make the outside look good. So you mm -hmm. cannot tell how I was really, what I was really going through inside. Mm -hmm. And after a while, you can't really cover that mask up any longer. You can't, you know, it eventually, it eventually comes to the surface. It yes, is. it do. It really do. Yeah. Even if it's by your actions. And a lot of people think that they try to, no matter how you cover it up, you, your actions will show. It will show. Even if your actions is you being angry, it's like something deep within that person is going on because they're just so mad and so angry. What, what's going on that's making you so mad and so angry? Right, right. It's something that person really didn't get a chance to deal with or they don't, they suffering through something at that moment. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when it comes to self-love what are some tips that you can give people for them to start their self-love journey what are some what are some things you can recommend have a routine that you can stick with and like i was saying earlier make sure you give yourself at least 15 to 30 minutes a day i know you can't take the whole day sometimes sometimes it's like i don't know what that looks like but when you start giving yourself at least 15 or 30 minutes a day 
then you will really enjoy that time. And it's like, I need more than just 30 minutes. I need more than just 15 minutes. Because even with the 15 or 30 minutes, it could be you sitting there reading a book. And sometimes when you're reading a really good book, your time is going to go past that 30 minutes because you're really enjoying that book. So that's one tip I say, give yourself daily some time. Another tip is have something that you do on a routine all the time. Even if it's taking a walk, that's exercise. I have to, okay, this is my time. I need to go take a walk. This is my time to think about what I need to do for the rest of the day. Do that. That's part of body movement, wellness, health. Walk, take a little walk. If you have a dog, go walk your dog. Mm -hmm. Another tip is, and try to meditate. Now, what I do every Monday is meditating with me. I do a guided meditation live. So sometimes I have technical difficulties. I mean, it's live. (laughs) (laughs) Things happen live, but yeah. So every Monday I do a live meditation. I got it live meditation because I feel as though it can set the attentions for the week. Some people don't, it's not able to meditate every single day and two, three times out the day. Okay. Well, at least if I just set this time on a Monday to meditate, I know that my week is going to be good. And I even say, if you feel as though you, with the intention you set for the week fell off, come back to the meditation and say, all right, I, I need to do this again. So meditate, pray to your higher power, I, I'm, whoever your higher power is, pray. Set so some time to say a prayer. Be in a state of gratitude. When you're being thankful, when you're just so grateful, that's also a self-love and self-care tip because you're putting, you putting your mind at, oh, I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful. Be thankful for the things you're receiving. Even if you're receiving little things, be really grateful for it. Be really thankful for it because eventually the bigger things will start coming because you're showing how grateful you are for the smaller things. Say some words of affirmation is another tip. When you use words words of affirmation, you are changing your mindset. All of the self-love and self-care really is a mindset change. It's changing Mm -hmm. the way you're thinking from your program mind that you had in the past. And it's changing self-care, self-love, wellness, and health is honestly is a lifestyle change. So by you doing your affirmations, you're reprogramming your mind to start wanting more out of life. And it could be something simple as I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm a I I receive all that the universe had for me to receive. I'm open to receive all of the goodness and all of the gratefulness that the universe had for me. I'm open and I'm open to being grateful and thankful for all the things that is coming forth to me. So just by saying small affirmations, at least five, try to stick with five. And sometimes it's like, I can't stick with five, well, at least three. Affirmations every single day and try to do it couple times throughout the day and it's just to help your mind to remember that is me that is what I want and when I tell you when you start doing them affirmations you will start manifesting the things that you're calling because you're putting it out there in the universe and asking it for you to receive it right right so what was that about five tips I gave you I didn't count and if I can add make those affirmations positive affirmations and i know that some yes yeah, some people that can be hard for some people because i know sometimes i get down on myself and i'm like what can i say positive about myself and I, i've noticed that my daughter sometimes when i say well tell me something good about yourself it's like she has to think about it so having those positive mm-hmm. affirmations to you know and that positive self-talk can definitely take your mind to a whole nother a whole nother level definitely right yeah because one of the days in the challenge is about Mm self-talk what are you telling yourself what are you saying to you because even the negative words is what you're bringing to you as well so you have to really be mindful in what you're telling yourself like if 
the other day, I just was annoyed with everyone in the house. And I just stepped in, <laughs> but I'm so annoyed. And then it's like, I wish I never even used the words because it's like my annoyance level went so high because mm-hmm. it's just like by me saying it, it just made it so it intensified. And I'm like, hold up, hold up. I <laughs> what just happened? So yeah. it was like, I had to sit, have a little cry to, to flush them that thought out my mind. Mm-hmm. It was like, no, I'm not. I'm not annoyed. I'm, and you know, and I just started saying I'm grateful. I, I had to rechange what I was saying because even them negative words will, they actually, honestly, when you think about it, when you saying negative words to yourself, it comes faster because you're putting so much energy in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And energy flows where focus goes. So the way what you say is so, power is in the tongue. So okay. you bring, words comes to life when you speak it. Mm-hmm. So by you speaking these words to life, that's what you're you calling upon you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, when you say certain things, yes, please say positive words if that's what you really want to bring forth to you. If you want to change your mindset, if you want to change how you are living, even if you're living in a place where you feel as though I'm stuck here, you stuck there because that's what you keep calling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to say to those that um, are watching, you des- you deserve to love yourself and yes. you deserve um, to give yourself those positive affirmations because um, so many people feel unworthy and undeserving. And I know there was a point in my life where I felt undeserving of, of real love, of true love because of the pain and the trauma. Just know that you are worthy, that you do deserve to love yourself. Um, God put us here, whether it's God or Buddha or whatever you believe in, we were put here for a purpose and with intent. And um, know that you are worthy of loving yourself. You're worthy and you deserve to love yourself. Yes, that is so true. That is so true. Um, so don't think that you taking a self-love challenge is, I'm not, I'm not good enough to do that. You're mm-hmm. worthy of it. And matter of fact, the people that say they're not good enough to do it, I challenge you to do it. <laughs> yes, I was just about to say. <laughs> I challenge you to do it anyway. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. definitely need to do it. And yeah. I'm here to hold your hand if you feel like okay i'm i'm stuck on this day i'm not understanding how to what to do with the action i'm not understanding what to do with this reach out to me so i could be like all right what, what are you stuck on so we could figure this out together right. and even after you've done the challenge i have a private facebook group that's mainly for the people that took the challenge so you don't feel like okay i took the challenge now what? And it's going to, right. And it's, all right. Join us in a Facebook, private Facebook group so we can discuss how you're feeling afterwards. So we can still encourage and push you through and be like, come on, we here. We're yeah. here for you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yes, definitely. You're still you're not alone. You're you're definitely not alone. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to also um add to our discussion is that. Self-love and self-care is not selfish. I think yeah. as, as being mothers and leaders in the community and you know working full-time and so forth, we think that taking time out for ourselves, or some people might feel that. I know it's some, sometimes I kind of feel guilty for taking that time for myself, but once I take the time for myself, I feel so refreshed and I feel so le- less stressed. Yeah. So you know, not only are you worthy and deserving, but it's not selfish. It's not nope. selfish for you to take time for you, for you, for, for me exactly. to, you know, to, to level myself, you know, yep. and just make, make Tiffany and make Alicia better people um, yep. for ourselves. Yeah. And when you think about it, when you take in time for yourself, now you're able to give from an overflow and not an empty cup. Yeah. Because by us being like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I'm a mom. I'm, I'm on this board. I um, volunteer here. I'm doing that. It's, you get to the point where 
your cup is empty and you don't really have nothing to give. And it's like the last person you're trying to give to is yourself because you've been giving so much to so many people. It's like, well, I don't have yeah. nothing to give you no more. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's needed. Like now you're pushing yourself off of fumes that's just not even there. And when a car run out of gas, guess what? It's not going nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> so yeah. Nowhere. You gotta, you yeah. gotta put some gas in you yeah. and putting gas in you is basically sometimes it's facing parts of you that you don't want to face. And by you facing these parts of you that you don't want to face, it's helping you to get over it and move past it. So it's no longer holding you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to get off of that, that busy highway of life and just take a moment to breathe. Yeah. Just relax. Pull over to the side and chill out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what else can we expect from you, Miss Alicia? What else do you have going on? Um, so I have a coaching course that's coming up, and I with the with one of oh, my words are stumbling. <laughs> I have a coaching course that's coming up, and with the coaching course, because even with the self love challenge, I touched on it a little bit about forgiveness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that topic right there baby mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. not, that was the hardest for me yes was for, and not See, only now you, me, see, now you got me about to tear <laughs> out here yeah because <laughs> like you still have to forgive yourself and you have to forgive others and but the most yeah. important person is to forgive you because sometimes we blame ourselves for feeling like we allow certain things to happen mm -hmm. so i i am coming up with a coaching program that have that forgiveness in it mm -hmm. that part alone is like six weeks because that can be challenging it can be that's challenging all together dealing with forgiveness and yeah, so I do have that coming up, and I also have uh, um, a Me First Mastermind uh, group coaching program coming up. Nice, nice. Um, I, 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 you know, that forgiveness thing, yeah, that's a big thing, um, and definitely a big thing when it comes to self-love, because if you have something back there that you haven't dealt with, whether it's trauma, whether it's abuse, whether it's childhood, whether it's some of your actions that caused you to do things, you know, that you weren't too proud of. Um, I remember when I was in counseling, this is probably 10, 12 years ago, my counselor told me, forgiveness is not so much about them. It's all about you. Yes. Um, yes. So you have to forgive yourself for Staying in a state of mind of being a victim, even yeah. though you were a victim, and even though what happened to you wasn't right, and even though someone wronged you, you have to forgive yourself and get out of that mindset that you're not going to let your past define who you are. So forgiveness is not about the other person, even though it does benefit them, but forgiveness is about you. And if you forgive yourself, a whole bunch of self-love happens. <laughs> Oh my a whole God. bunch of self-care happens. <laughs> Honestly, forgiveness for you is rewarding. Because yes. when you think about it, if you're holding on, well, they need to owe me apology. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not getting that apology. I'm sorry. And even if you do, it may not even be genuine. And right. one of the issues I had was with my father. I was, I'm like, I was so angry and mad with him even after he passed away and it's like okay well, how do you how do you get a forgiveness or get a i'm sorry from someone that's gone yeah and it's yeah. like you can you still can forgive yourself and you can still forgive that person even if they're no longer in your life they no longer serving you well if you still have that thought pattern of what they've done and it's like i can't get past that yeah yes you can it's a process but you can get past it and yeah. i would not suggest you to try to do it in a way of being selfish and in a way of like nah they uh-uh mm -mm. you can forget <laughs> but you can't forget 
then you're right. really still not rewarding yourself with it. That's true. And the Bible says that when God forgives you, all that is in the past. Yes. So when you yes. forgive yourself, you have to let it go. You have to yes. let it go. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's so true. Yeah. So yeah, it's part of the, the, the challenge as well. I didn't dive too deep, but I dived deep enough. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. yeah. So, I yes. mean, we basically, I told, talked about a couple things that's part of the challenge today. Mm -hmm. And I really want so many people to join it because it's 15 days. And I think I touched, I don't even know how many days I just told what topics <laughs> was. <laughs> but it's a, a few topics like asking for help, the forgiveness, your eating yeah. habits, your morning routine. Um, what do you enjoy? Um, I can't think of everything off the back right now, but yeah. That's enough. Don't give them no more. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take the challenge to know. You the have rest. to take the challenge. You have to take the challenge. Yes. All right. So for those that are watching, because we've had several watching, what do you want to say? What do you want to say? Join me on this challenge. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hold your hand the whole way. Tiffany already said she took the challenge. She stated how it made her feel. The reflection I told y'all how it made me feel. You are going to have to reflect on you. You are. Yeah. That's the point of the challenge because you have you learn who you are. Learn what you want. It is really important. Yeah. So come on, join me. Come on, what you wait for? <laughs> How can people find the challenge? It's on Eventbrite. Um, oh, I might have to probably put the link. But yeah, it's on Eventbrite. And, a, mm -hmm. oh, and another thing, I am switching platforms. So right okay. now, this, this is near the end of the month and the challenge starts Saturday. I'm keeping it on Eventbrite. But I'm about to switch platforms with another... Um, marketer to do the tickets with my challenge mm -hmm. so yeah right now you can find it on eventbrite it's on facebook um, i'm putting it in the comments now on this video Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes and, and the thing about it is it's not even expensive it's not it's not even expensive so it's, it's not like oh, I, you know i can't afford it and stuff like that it's not expensive it's a 10-piece nugget meal at mcdonald's <laughs> I wanted it affordable for all. I didn't want yes. someone to say, oh yeah, I want to do it, but I I, I can't take that challenge. <laughs> yep. And and probably about it, it's an investment for you. It is. Investing yourself. Very inexpensive investment. Yes. That you're gonna not only enjoy, but you're gonna learn something from it. You're gonna benefit from it. I don't, I can't. I, I'm going to put this out there. There's no one that's going to take a challenge that's not going to benefit from it. Right. It's, it's impossible. You're going to benefit from it in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just learning new techniques for self-love yes. and self-care. So um, definitely a great investment. Um, very nominal investment. Very small mm -hmm. price to pay for an abundance of love for yourself yes yes <laughs> i like that for an abundance of love for yourself invest in you yes invest in you show up for yourself New yes <laughs> you. yes yes thank you miss so alicia yes. yes show up for you so we could do this me first movement this is a movement guys we move yes. it for us hashtag me first yes <laughs> yes yeah, so um alicia tell us how people can find you and then again how they can find the challenge i put it in the link but i want them to hear from you um how can they find you and how can they find the challenge you can find me at my company name is member moments by lee so you can if you want to contact me you can contact me at member moments by lee at gmail.com my facebook member moments by lee also, I have a business phone number, 980-285-2279. And also, you can find me on my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my website, memblemomentsbyleellc.com. 
Okay, I'm putting that all in here. I think I got it. LLC.com. Got it. Yes. Um, all in the comments. Google Mimble Moments by Lee. You're going to see it. You're going to see got it. it. All right, we've got it. We, yep. we know where to find you. <laughs> the gram is the same. Member Moments by Lee. That's that's me. Yeah. I'm Lee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Alicia, for joining us tonight to talk about self love, the importance of it, and showing up for yourself, challenging yourself to love yourself. Um, so many things, so many doors are going to open. Your life is going to open up because you are learning tips for self-love and self-care and share it with your family, your kids, yes. your hubby, your partner, your friends, your family. Um, you can't go wrong. You can't Not go wrong. Not can't at go wrong. all. <laughs> so thank you again, Miss Alicia. You can find thank her you. memorable moments by Lee, Alicia Richardson. Um, there you go. Thank you guys for listening <laughs> and showing up to this wonderful moment we had and yes. i want you guys to show up for yourself as well yeah and we will see you next month miss alicia with some of yeah. your um with some of the people that take the challenge so they can yeah. share they can share how self-love has um has helped it has helped them yes <laughs> <That's right. laughs> all right everyone have a good night good night <laughs>